All right. Hey guys, how's it going? Can you guys hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. All right, very good. Hey, we're, we're just waiting on a few more people and we're gonna get started pretty soon. So I just wanted to say hello while we're waiting for everyone. And how's everyone doing? You guys all doing okay? We got a thumbs up, everyone's doing okay? Terrific, I know summer, Summer is like here pretty much, so I'm really excited about that. And I know you guys are excited about that. All kinds of fun summer stuff going on, so it's going to be terrific. And I see people got their cards up. Ter awesome. So we're just waiting on maybe a few more people. We got about maybe three more people or so we're waiting to show up, and then we're going to get started. So go ahead and get your stuff ready. We got our cards. What is that? This is Caroline. Oh, we got our uh, – so today is Expedition 2 right expedition to the marine reptiles right the marine reptiles very cool how many people are you still waiting on do we know we got everyone do you think um, are we close to we can okay well i think we'll go ahead and get started you guys are here and ready to rock and roll so we're going to start talking about this stuff and for starters you might notice that we got a little bit different background today well, I want to say a big thank you to the Riverwalk Movie Theaters here in Edwards, Colorado. They're letting us use their movie theater for our shows for you guys on Saturdays, which means they're going to get bigger and better. And after our virtual shows, we do shows here at the movie theater. So if you happen to be here in the Vale area in Eagle County, every Saturday at 10 a.m., we do dinosaur shows here at Riverwalk Theaters in Edwards, Colorado. So we're really excited about that. We're excited to be in this big, wonderful movie theater, and we got all kinds of cool stuff to talk about. I also want to remind you guys, right now, I have you guys muted. So your computers are muted. I can't hear you, right? So if you guys have a question, unmute yourself, ask the question, and then mute Again, so we don't have a lot of noise going on, but I'm gonna wait and get going a little bit before I ask for questions, okay? All right, so does everyone have your fossil box? You guys got your fossil box? Pretty cool, you guys are ready to rock it? Yep, I see the, the boxes out there, woo! I love that. So get out your expedition cards and get expedition number two. Expedition number two, the marine reptiles. And in your box, you should have, yeah, a beautiful tooth to a mosasaur. It's the brown one. The brown tooth is kind of round. It's a big, big honking one. Yeah, I see you guys got that. Terrific. All right. We're going to talk about this guy and who this tooth came from. This is a real mosasaur tooth. And mosasaurs were one of many different kinds of marine reptiles. And I know a lot of you guys out there know that these animals were not dinosaurs, right? They're not dinosaurs, they're marine reptiles. And a lot of parents get confused. So you'll be able to amaze your parents and your friends when they talk about these as being dinosaurs, you can say, no, these are marine reptiles, right? All right. So as we jump into this, I want to go back a little bit, because I know I've talked to you guys a lot about the ancient world and how things have changed. And the reason I have this up here, right here, this picture, we're not talking about Parasaurolophus today. And of course, this is Parasaurolophus with the big tube on the back of his head. It was a plant eater in the Cretaceous period. But the reason I have this up here is if you notice in the background of this picture, 
we have all this water starting to appear, right? And I've talked to a lot of you guys before, and if you remember, about 90 million years ago, right here in Colorado, and in fact, the whole Western United States, I'm talking about Montana and Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Colorado, Utah, Kansas, Nebraska, most all of Texas was all underwater. This whole area was at the bottom of an ancient ocean, right? And that's where the marine reptiles thrived and they ruled the oceans, right? Some of them got absolutely gigantic. Some of them got almost 70 feet long, right? But let's take it back even further than that. Now, these marine reptiles are very successful animals. They've been around and had, had been around for a long, long, long time before any of the dinosaurs you guys recognize. And in fact, if we go way back into the Triassic era, you remember the, the three periods of the dinosaurs, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous, right? If we go all the way back to the beginning, to the Triassic, during the oceans of that time, we would have seen a lot of these guys, the ichthyosaurs, right? And I have a picture coming up. We'll take another look at these guys. But this is a little one. This would have been like a baby one. They got super gigantic. And these are the ones that you guys see in pictures that kind of look like a dolphin, right? They kind of look like a really mean dolphin or a fish or a shark. But these are reptiles. Just like snakes and turtles and lizards and crocodiles and dinosaurs, ichthyosaurs were reptiles. They were marine reptiles. And there was a lot of them. They were in a family of animals called ichthyosaurs. And the word ichthyosaur, and it sounds funny, you go, ich, ichthyosaur. It literally translates to fish lizard because it looks just like a fish, but it's a reptile like a lizard, right? So these guys, there was lots of different kinds. And in fact, there was one of these called a Shonosaurus. And Shonosaurus so far is probably the largest animal that's ever lived. They think it's very close, very close to beating out even the blue whale. Actually, it hasn't quite beat out the blue whale yet. So Shonosaurus was the second largest animal to ever live in the history of the world. And it happened to be an ichthyosaur and it lived in the ocean and it was enormous. It was 75 feet long. It weighed hundreds of tons. It was a massive animal and it was a type of ichthyosaur, a marine reptile. Now those ichthyosaurs went on through the oceans for the entire period of the dinosaurs. At the beginning, they ruled the oceans because they were giant and they had no competitors at that point. There was some sharks, there was some crocodiles, but they weren't that big. The, the, at that time, the ichthyosaurs were the biggest and they ruled the oceans. But as time went by, things changed, right? Just like the ancient ocean that started to take over. If I flip this over right here, if you remember, right in Colorado, right here, as that ocean started to take over, it started covering the land, right? And all the highlands and mountains and hills became islands because the water filled in all the way around them. And those islands were lush here in Colorado, covered in palm trees. The big pterosaurs circled the skies. Another successful animal, pterosaurs were around the entire period of the dinosaurs. From the Triassic all the way to the end, they flew the skies of the ancient dinosaur times. But the ocean kept coming, and pretty soon, here's our guys we're talking about. We're in the realm of the mosasaurs, of the plesiosaurs, of the giant marine reptiles. So here's something cool. I want you guys to pick up that tooth you have, the brown tooth you guys all got in your fossil box. This is the creature that tooth is from. This big guy right here, the Mosasaur. There's one of his teeth. If I put it right up in there like that, that's his tooth, right? And that's a real fossil you guys have. That's going to be a very special fossil for your collection because you know why, that, why it's so special? You know what this guy's nickname was? He was so tough and so mean, his nickname was the T-Rex 
of the ocean. Why do you think they called him the T-Rex of the ocean? I hear some guessing out there. Because he was big and bad, right? He ate whatever he wanted to, right? He ate giant sharks, because there was big sharks back then, not Megalodon, because Megalodon came way, way, way after the dinosaurs. But there were very big sharks, 30, 40 foot sharks during the dinosaur times. Giant turtles, right? Archeolon, the largest turtle that ever lived was during this time. Sharks, turtles, crocodiles, right? Thus, if there was a smaller size crocodile, this guy could get him. But you know what one of the weirdest things is? This guy even ate other mosasaurs. Yeah, he was a cannibal. A lot of big animals like this, including big dinosaurs like T-Rex and Allosaurus, they're what we call opportunistic feeder. Let me say that again, opportunistic feeder. And what that means is they take the opportunity to feed whenever they can. Because animals that are this big need a lot of food, right? It's like an elephant. Elephants eat a lot of food and they're never going to pass up food if it's there because they're not sure where their next meal's coming from and during this time life was tough you had to fight constantly to get food so every time the opportunity to feed presented itself these guys would eat and they would eat and they would eat everything they could and make themselves so full that they probably just went someplace and slept for a while because they didn't know when their next meal was coming by opportunistic feeders we see that nowadays with like great white sharks and giant crocodiles huge pythons giant lizards like the komodo dragon all reptiles but even see it with mammals like lions they'll sometimes eat so much that they can't even get up off the ground they got to sit down and just digest because they've eaten so much food but they're opportunistic feeders if the opportunity's there they will feed so these guys, the T-Rex of the ocean, they ate crocodiles, turtles, sharks, plesiosaurs, the long neck plesiosaurs. You see this guy here, it almost looks like he's smiling. I don't think he realizes what's sneaking up behind him. But we see the plesiosaur with the long neck and the flippers. That's a pretty common one in the uh, pictures and drawings and movies from dinosaur times. But even they were on the Mosasaurus menu for sure. And I actually have, a beautiful piece of a plesiosaur's jaw, uh, face right here. Look at that. I'm going to hold it here so you can see it well. That's part of his skull. Look at his long, spiky teeth. He had long, spiky teeth compared to a mosasaur tooth. Look how fat that one. That one's a big, chunky, fat one for tearing up big things. These are long and skinny, almost like little spears, right? So these guys ate small things. Because if you look, look how big this guy, he was a big animal, but look how teeny tiny, he had a little teeny tiny head. So he probably ate small things like fishes. He probably may ate squid and ammonites and, and probably could eat a small baby mosasaur, right? When a mosasaur was born, it was pretty small. And every time, and during the dinosaur times, if you're a baby of any kind, you're on the menu for sure. But this guy had those long, spiky teeth for eating fish. There, I'll get up there, you can go. You can see those for snagging fish or whatever he could eat. But he had very unique teeth compared to the big, chunky mosasaur teeth. This guy was more like a crocodile. This guy was more like a filter, like a little fish eating creature, is what he was. But either way, these guys would come in contact with each other on a regular basis. And these guys lived right here where we're standing, right here in Colorado, when the ancient ocean covered this area, these guys, massive creatures, circled the oceans and cruised all over the place. They were definitely here. And one other thing I wanna tell you about the Mosasaur, about the tooth you guys have, here's something really cool about the Mosasaur. So you think of all kinds of meat-eating animals, everything from Tyrannosaurus rex to a crocodile, to a shark, to people, right? You guys, we have teeth up here, right? And then we have teeth down here, an upper teeth and lower teeth. So did Mosasaurs, but they had a third set of teeth going down the back of their throat. 
Yikes. Let me turn, show you a picture of that. If we can flip this one over. If you see this picture right here, he's got teeth on his upper face. He's got teeth on his lower face, but right back here, he's got teeth going down the back of his throat. So mosasaurs were not only big and mean and had huge teeth, but they had three sets of teeth. Once you got in a mosasaur's mouth, that was it. It was a one-way trip. You weren't coming back out. And here's something cool about this picture. A lot of kids love this picture, and I like that picture too. It's a mosasaur jumping up to grab a pterodactyl right out of the sky. What? And kids look at that and go, well, that couldn't probably happen in real life. It probably could, and I'll tell you why. Because Mother Nature does things in a way that if it works really well, she uses that idea for millions and millions of years because it works so well. And nowadays, in present day, while we're here right now, there's a place in Australia, and it's a really special place because it's a place where every year uh, these giant flying foxes, they all meet here to mate. A flying fox is like a really big bat, but he looks more like a fox. He's like a really cute bat, but he's big. His arms are about as wide as my arms. He's pretty big. And they go to this one spot every year to mate and have babies. But the crocodiles also know that they come there every year to mate. So what happens in this place in Australia is all the crocodiles sit in the water with just their eyes showing and they wait, and they wait, and pretty soon the flying foxes arrive, and it's really hot in Australia, and it's really humid, and it's jungle and tropical, so they sweat, and they need water, and what they do is they swoop down to the water and grab a sip of water and then fly back up. That's when they make their mistakes because the crocodiles know that these flying foxes are going to zip down and just skim the water to get a sip of water and they wait. And as soon as they come right within reach, the crocodile leaps out of the water and grabs the flying fox right out of the air, exactly like this picture. So this did happen. And remember, I always tell you guys, the fossil record teach us a teaches us about these things and fossils never lie say that with me right fossils never lie fossils always tell the truth here's another cool fossil story that has to do with the big pterosaurs this one's pretty neat and has a happy ending not too long ago scientists found a fossilized pterodactyl one of these pterosaurs right the flying ones the flying reptiles not dinosaurs flying reptiles we have the marine reptiles, not dinosaurs, and the flying reptiles, not dinosaurs. We have another show coming up in your expeditions about pterosaurs. But in the meantime, I'll tell this story, and I'll tell it again later because this is pretty cool. They found a fossilized pterosaur, and guess what they found in his back? In the bones of his back, there was a shark tooth embedded in the bone, which means that that pterosaur got attacked by a shark at one point. It was either flying and the shark jumped out or it was sitting in the water and the shark grabbed it. Either way, that pterosaur got bit by a shark. The tooth when the shark popped out of his mouth got stuck inside the pterosaur and the pterosaur's bone healed over the shark tooth. And it got away from the shark and it lived to live out the rest of his life. How crazy is that? But like I said, the fossils never lie, and they tell us the story of that animal. Here's another fossil I want to show you guys. So you know the giant mosasaur tooth you have. This is a fossil of my baby mosasaur. Look how tiny, if I put my finger next to this, look how tiny these little baby teeth are. This little mosasaur was about six feet long, probably. It was a little baby. This piece here is the left side the lower jaw like this. And that's about 70 million years old. And this was found up in Montana, just north of where we are. So we know that there was mosasaurs in the ocean that covered Montana, which means they were in the ocean that covered Colorado as well. They're crazy cool animals. And if we flip this over, we get another shot of the ichthyosaur. The ichthyosaurs 
That's this one right here. This is the one that looks like the dolphin, right? The one I showed you before. This is the skeleton, and that's probably kind of what it looked like in real life. Now, these guys actually went extinct before the asteroid hit. And the reason they went extinct is because mosasaurs were so big and bad that they basically took these guys out. The mosasaurs were so big and so prolific, meaning there was a lot of them, and they had such big appetites that they basically ate all the ichthyosaurs. And the ichthyosaurs could not survive, and they went extinct because the mosasaurs ate everything. But it was not going to last for the mosasaurs, right? Because they're not around anymore. And just like the dinosaurs, when that asteroid struck the Earth, it changed the Earth forever for all those animals. It poisoned the skies. It burned up the land. It killed off the food. It, it poisoned and toxified the oceans, which means all these creatures that lived in that beautiful ocean couldn't live anymore, especially if you were near the surface where you breathed air. If you had to come to the surface, you were done. Anything that lived deep, deep down survived, like sharks and a lot of fish and coelacanths, right? All kinds of creatures that never had to come to the surface, they survived a lot of that. But anything like these, the ichthyosaurs, or even the enormous and successful mosasaurs, if they had to come to the surface, that was it. They did not survive. They couldn't have babies. If they did have babies, the babies died so quickly because the ocean was poisoned by the asteroid. And even the largest animals that ever rule the oceans, meat eaters, the mosasaurs, the ichthyosaurs, and even the giant plesiosaurs, they simply could not adapt. And it's all about adapting. If you don't adapt, you die, right? We gotta learn how to change. Kind of like what's going on right now with this virus, right? Our lives are changing. We gotta figure out ways to still be happy, still live our lives, but also we wanna be safe. So that's about changing and adapting. If we adapt, you survive. If you can't adapt, you just do not survive. So even though these guys were giant and were so successful, they simply didn't last and they're gone. And I'm a little happy about that. I'll tell you why, because I would never step foot near an ocean if there was a 70 foot mosasaur swimming around. Sharks make me worried enough, but mosasaurs would really make me worried. All right, there you go. That's your basic overview of marine reptiles, not dinosaurs, marine reptiles, particularly the mosasaur. You guys have that great fossil tooth, part of your, your great collection there right now. So I think we probably have some questions right now. If you guys can either type in your questions or you can unmute and ask your question, but go ahead. What do you guys want to know about these guys? Do you have anyone? I think Kerr has a question. Let's see, is my volume up? Let's see. I can't. Uh... How fast do they swim? Wait, say that one more time. How fast do they swim? Oh, ter terrific question from Kurt. How fast do they swim? Well, here's a good answer for that. They probably could swim pretty darn fast, kind of like crocodiles and alligators. The mosasaurs and plesiosaurs had those flippers. So they actually could swim probably faster than alligators and, uh, and crocodiles because they had the flippers and that great tail. Now the ichthyosaurs, these guys could probably swim as fast as a dolphin. Because remember I was talking before about how Mother Nature, when she has a great idea, she sticks with it. That's why we see the giant long necks uh, sauropod dinosaurs like Brachiosaurus, they went extinct because the asteroid, but their design works so well. We see in mammals and animals today like giraffes, they have long necks, so it's a great idea, so that works. Same with ichthyosaurs, same shape as a shark or a dolphin. Sharks and dolphins can swim really fast. So I would guess ichthyosaurs, especially of average size, could swim really fast. Giant ones, like the one I mentioned, the Shonosaurus, who was one of the biggest animals ever, probably did not need to swim fast. It didn't need to escape anything. It was in no hurry. So it probably wasn't real fast. Mosasaurs and plesiosaurs were probably pretty quick because they had all those flippers to really help them fly through the water. That's a terrific question. Good question. All right, what do we got next? You got anyone else out there? I have one from oh, we got. Gabe. From Gabe. Hey, Gabe, what do you got, bud? What's the largest known mosasaur skeleton? The largest known mosasaur skeleton. You know what? There's a few of them around. 
And here's the thing about Mosasaurs. Here's the analogy I like to use, the comp comparison I like to use. If I was to write on a chalkboard, bears, right? Types of bears. Underneath you could write polar bear, grizzly bear, brown bear, Kodiak bear, sloth bear, black bear. They're all bears, right? Same with Mosasaurs. There was lots of different kinds, right? There was, uh, 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 there well, one of the biggest ones was Tyl Tylosaurus. Tylosaurus was one of the biggest Mosasaurs, and that's probably the largest skeleton in, I think it's a museum in Texas somewhere, that one. It's gigantic. There actually was another one called Mosasaurus, which is a little confusing, but Mosasaurus was a type of Mosasaur. But Tylosaurus, I think, was the biggest one so far, and just his head was somewhere close to seven feet long. There was another one that you probably heard of and referred to as Predator X. Predator X is also Lyopleurodon. Lyopleurodon was a type of Pliosaur, which is the same family as Plesiosaurs. He just had a short neck instead of a really long neck. And Lyopleurodon got pretty large too. He didn't get quite as big as Tylosaurus, but his head was really super big. So his head was bigger. He was a weird one too, but lots of different kinds. Great question. All right, next one. Ryan asked, what's the most common diet for mosasaurs, ichthyosaurs, and plesiosaurs? The most common diet for mosasaurs, ichthyosaurs, and plesiosaurs, we'll put it in this order, from top to bottom. Mosasaurs probably ate pretty much everything. Sharks, turtles, uh, crocodiles. It ate, it ate uh, plesiosaurs, it ate ichthyosaurs, and it ate other mosasaurs. The scientists have actually found huge skulls from mosasaurs and they looked closely and saw holes in the top of the skull that are teeth marks from a larger mosasaur coming by and crushing their head so even big mosasaurs got eaten by even bigger mosasaurs so mosasaurs were the top they ate everything they could get their mouths wrapped around for sure below that you had plesiosaurs even though they got big they had little teeny heads so they ate a ton of fish they probably also ate ammonites. Remember ammonites are the shells with the squid that lived in them. They ate probably squid as well and all kinds of fish. And they would, every now and again, I'm sure, they would eat a baby mosasaur if they found one or a baby ichthyosaur if they found one. Now, ichthyosaurs were below that as far as their mouths are pretty small too. They were fairly limited to fish, just like plesiosaurs, to fish and a lot of ammonites because their mouths were strong enough to crack the shell of an ammonite and then pull the soft-bodied squid-like creature out and eat that. But again, if an ichthyosaur came across a little baby mosasaur, you bet that ichthyosaur would certainly eat it up. So they kind of ate everything in front of them. Great question, I like that one. All right, next one. Caleb has his hand raised. Hey, Caleb. Hold on, let me unmute him. Let's get you unmuted, hold on one second. Is it not working? Maybe go ahead, Caleb, just type it in right now. See, if I, can, I can't get him unmuted. Or see if he can unmute himself. Hey, hey Caleb, can you un unmute yourself? Let's see if you can get you on yourself. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Hi, guys. Um, Hi, would, would the um, photos when dinosaurs were alive, would those big eyes on the car? Can you, say, can you ask that one more time? Were dinosaurs as big as a car, or giant? Prehistoric turtles were they as big as a car? Oh yes, Archeolon. Archeolon was bigger than a car. Archeolon shell was about as big as two of these big pictures right here. So I have this picture here, and if there was another one here, that's just how big his shell was. Archeolon's head was about this big. He was the largest turtle that ever lived. That's a great question. Good job. All right, next one. Internet's coming in. Let's see. I don't know. Eloise, you got anything? Is that it? How are we doing on time? We got 10 minutes left. We got a few minutes left here. Okay. There's Sawyer and Lucy. Hey, hi, there's Sawyer and Lucy. And who else is in there? There's Eloise. Cash is here. Cash and Caroline. I see Lacey for Babes there. All kinds of you guys asking questions and being here. I'm so happy you guys are all here. So just to finish up, it sounds like it didn't seem like we have too many more questions. I gave you guys a lot of information. Now remember, the most thing, important thing to remember on this expedition for marine reptiles is that's exactly what they are, marine reptiles. 
Remember, dinosaurs lived on the land, and so far, there's no dinosaurs that have been discovered that had flippers. That's an easy way to remember it. If it has a flippers, like these guys, or like a mosasaur or a plesiosaur, if it has flippers, it's not a dinosaur. It's a marine reptile, and they were amazing creatures, and they were right here. And there's a good chance wherever you guys are, I know you guys are from all over the states right there, that they're in your area. They lived a long time. They were extremely successful animals, especially the ichthyosaurs, and they covered tens if not hundreds of millions of years of time until the end when the asteroid struck. And even, the, even those animals, the giant great predatory marine reptiles, could not survive the impact of that asteroid. Do you have a question? I got one more All question. Right, one more from question Gabe. from Gabe. Hey, Gabe. Was there anything bigger than any kind of mosasaur? Was there anything bigger than any kind of mosasaur? I think the only thing that would be bigger than the largest mosasaurs would be that one type of ichthyosaur called Shonosaurus. And Shonosaurus was absolutely gigantic. I think I might have said 70 or 80 feet before, but I think now that I'm thinking of it, it may have been closer to 100 feet long. It was absolutely gigantic, and it would have been bigger than mosasaurs. Now, a lot of you guys have seen the Jurassic Park movies, particularly the Jurassic World movies. Some of you guys are a little young for them, but some of you guys have seen them. If you remember the scene where that giant mosasaur jumps out of the water and grabs that shark that they have hanging and falls back down in the water, that was just a movie one. They didn't get that big so far. But again, that's one of the most exciting things about science and paleontology is we don't know what's out there. Someone could discover something today or tomorrow that was bigger than anything you'd ever seen before. One more question One from more Ryan. question. From who? Ryan. From Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Do they Ryan. live in the deepest part of the ocean? Do uh, marine reptiles live in the deepest parts of the ocean? That's a terrific guess. I would have to guess probably not the deepest, deepest, deepest parts. And here's why. In the deepest, deepest parts, at the bottom of the Marianas Trench or someplace like that where it's th almost 30,000 feet down, you only usually find creatures that don't breathe air, right? So even a whale, for example, cannot go all the way that deep. Whales can go pretty deep, but when you take a breath of air into your lungs and go underwater, that air starts to expand in your lungs. So animals that breathe air can only go so far before it gets dangerous for them and having air in their lungs because that air wants to push out the deeper you go. It's called pressure. And the pressure gets deeper and st stronger and stronger. So I would guess because mosasaurs, ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, they breathed air just like you and I. They didn't have blowholes. Now, even though this guy looks like a dolphin or a porpoise, he didn't have a blowhole. <sighs> or like a whale, they didn't have those. They would just come up to the surface, open their mouth, <sighs> take a deep breath, and then dive back down. And because they breathed air, they couldn't go all the way to the deepest parts of the oceans. They were probably not capable of that. So they stayed in the upper levels because they'd have to get another breath, right? And if you go too far down, you might not make it back up by the time you need more air. But that's a terrific question. All right, we got one more. Ryan also asked, do they eat predators bigger than them? Ryan, good question. Do they eat predators larger than them? You know what? I'm not sure. I haven't seen really any cases of that, but one of the other amazing things about nature and science is you can't ever think that something didn't happen. Almost everything happens at some point. And I would wager to guess, meaning I would bet on it, that there was a mosasaur somewhere along the line that thought it was so tough it was gonna take on something bigger than it. And usually that does not end well. Usually it does not end well when a smaller animal takes on a bigger animal, unless, unless that bigger animal is really old, really sick, or really injured. And the same thing would happen with dinosaurs. There was probably raptors, the sm small raptors that could take down a Tyrannosaurus rex if that Tyrannosaurus Rex was really old, really sick, or had a really bad injury, and it simply could not defend itself against a bunch of smaller ones. But in most cases, smaller animals would have a hard time with the bigger ones. So is that it? You guys, that's it. 
Great questions, fun show, and we'll see you guys next Saturday for the weird marine creatures. And I think you guys got coral, and you have uh, you have an echinoderm, which is like a fossilized sand dollar, and you have crinoid fossils in that bag together. We're going to talk all about those because the EC animals back then were weird, and some of them are still around today. Have a great day, and we'll see you guys later.